Hello, my name is Dr. Minde, and in this lecture series, I'm going to discuss the mechanics of breathing. Yeah, the mechanics of breathing. So, um, the objectives you by the end of this lecture, you should be able to understand the principles of respiratory movement and the movements that are involved to change the diameter of the thoracic cage. And this movement, you need to understand the different phases of respiration, both under normal and stressed condition. So, what are the principles of the thoracic movement? During inspiration, as you breathe in, the lungs usually expand passively. And during expiration, that's breathing out, the lungs will retract. The lungs are usually elastic, so there's that recoil that occurs, so they will retract during expiration. So these movements are usually governed by two factors. So there is the capacity of the thorax. So there's alteration in the capacity of the thorax as well as the elasticity of the pulmonary alveolar and the thoracic wall. So there's that recoil during expiration. So elastic recoil of pulmonary alveolar and the thoracic wall. So during inspiration, what happens? As you uh, breathe in, the ribs move outwards and upwards, while the diaphragm contracts, therefore it flattens. Okay, so the diaphragm flattens, the ribs move outwards and upwards. So when this happens, you increase the volume of the thoracic cavity. When you increase the volume, the pressure inside the thoracic cavity reduces. So the atmospheric pressure outside is more than the pressure in the lung, therefore forcing air in. So I'll repeat, during inspiration, the ribs move upwards and outwards due to the contraction of the muscles of respiration. So intercostal muscles, pectoralis muscles, serratus anterior muscles that are attaching on the ribs. So they will cause the ribs to move upwards and outwards. The diaphragm contracts and flattens. So all these increase the volume of the thoracic cage. When you increase the volume, the air pressure reduces. So the atmospheric pressure outside is more than the pressure inside, forcing air in, causing inhalation. What happens during exhalation? During exhalation, the diaphragm now relaxes. So it now forms the dome. You can see it relaxes, so it moves upwards. Then the ribs will now move back inwards and downwards. So the intercostal muscles, pectoralis minor, they all relax, causing the ribs to now move back downwards and inwards. So the volume in the thoracic cage reduces. Pressure in the thoracic cage now becomes higher than the pressure outside, forcing air outside the lungs. So during quiet inspiration, there is an increase in the anterior posterior diameter. This is what you call the pump handle movement. So when you're explaining inspiration, there's a pump handle mechanism you need to explain, like the water pump. You know how you pump water, you hold onto the handle and you keep pumping up and down. So this pump handle movement increases the anterior posterior diameter of the, of the um, thoracic cage. So in this case, the ribs are acting as a lever and the fulcrum being just lateral to the mm -hmm. tubercle. So the anterior end of the rib is lower than the posterior end. The anterior end of the ribs normally are lower than the posterior end of the ribs. So during elevation of the rib, the anterior end moves forwards and upwards. So when the ribs elevate during inspiration, the anterior part of the rib move forward and upwards. That's together with the sternum. So anterior part of the ribs and the sternum move forwards and upwards. So the vertebral sternal um, ribs are the ones that are causing this movement. The ribs that are inserting on the sternum, not the floating ribs. So the body of the sternum now moves up and down. So that's our pump handle. The sternum is able to move up and down, and that is caused by the vertebral sternal ribs that are usually lower on the posterior end, uh, the, usually lower on the anterior and then the posterior end. So when they elevate, they cause the sternum to move up and down. So the first rib usually is fixed by contraction of the, of the neck and contraction of the intercostal muscles. So 
the ribs are now drawn together and raised towards the first rib. So that's what happens in the pump handle mechanism. First rib are fixed by the scalenus muscle and contracting intercostal muscles. So the other vertebrosternal ribs are raised towards the first rib. And remember the anterior portion of these vertebrosternal ribs are lower than the posterior portion. So when they now move, they cause the sternum to move up and down like the pump handle. So this movement of the sternum upwards, okay, upwards and outwards increases the anterior posterior diameter of the thoracic cage. When it moves downwards and inwards, it reduces the diameter. So that's the pump handle movement. So this is what we are talking about. So these ribs, you can see the anterior portion of the of the ribs are downwards. Okay, so when inspiration occurs, the intercostal muscles will contract and the sternum, the first rib is fixed by the scalenus anterior muscles, but these other intercostal muscles will cause the ribs to now move upwards and outwards, and that way it causes the sternum to move upwards and outwards. So if this is your water pump, this is how the handle works so it pushes onto the sternum and that increases the so when this sternum is pushed outwards and upwards you increase the anterior posterior diameter in the thoracic cage and when you increase the diameter the volume increases the pressure becomes lower than the atmospheric pressure causing air to come in so pump handle increases anterior posterior diameter hence increasing the volume lowering the pressure then maximizing on inhalation. And it is caused by intercostal muscles causing the anterior portion of the rib, the vertebrosternal ribs, to move the sternum anteriorly and outwards, and that increases the anterior posterior diameter. Then we have the transverse diameter. This is now the bucket handle movement. Remember, when a, bu a bucket has a, has a handle, and when the handle is resting, the handle is on the side of the bucket. So that's how the ribs are. The ribs usually curve downwards like the bucket handle. The ribs usually curve downwards as well as forwards like the bucket handle. So around the chest wall, in this way, they resemble the bucket handle. So during inspiration, what happens? The ribs that were hanging downwards and forwards, they now they are now elevated. So the shaft of the ribs, the ribs move upwards and outwards the shafts move outwards during respiration so it's like when you want to pick the bucket handle so from a lower position you now raise the bucket handle so if the ribs are raised like a bucket handle what happens the transverse diameter of the thoracic cav cavity increases so when you increase the transverse um, diameter volume increases pressure reduces and the pressure atmospheric pressure is more than inside thoracic cavity pressure forcing air in in inspiration so the transverse diameter is increased by fixing the first rib and raising the other ribs by the intercostal muscles so usually the ribs are downwards are resting downwards and forwards so during inspiration intercostal muscles contract this fixes the first ribs and causes the other ribs to move outwards and upwards. So the bucket handles now move upwards and outwards and coincidentally increasing the transverse diameter. Increasing transverse diameter increases the volume and reduces the pressure within the thoracic cavity, making the atmospheric pressure to be more, forcing the air inside. So again, this transverse diameter is mainly by the vertebrochondral ribs. So these are the ribs that are going to insert from the vertebra to the costal cartilages. So if the bucket handle, the ribs were downwards, then they're elevated and come outwards. Therefore, you increase this transverse diameter. So the vertical diameter, to increase the vertical diameter, there are two options. Either the roof We've done anterior posterior diameter, we've done transverse diameter, but there's also a vertical diameter. So to increase vertical diameter, either the roof is raised or the flow is lowered. And the roof, remember, is formed by suprapleural membrane, and it's usually fixed. So the only option you have is to deal with the flow, and the flow is made up by the mobile diaphragm. So when during inspiration, the diaphragm contracts, therefore it flattens, so it moves lower, and that way you increase the vertical diameter of the thoracic cavity. So 
in, if you increase the, the vertical diameter by lowering the diaphragm, you have the slow twitch muscles that will contract. These are resistant to fatigue. So the diaphragm now descends to the abdomen, increasing the vertical diameter of the thoracic cavity. So as the diaphragm descends on inspiration, volume increases. Intra-abdominal pressure is going to rise. So the rise in the pressure is accommodated by relaxation of abdominal wall muscles. So you're reducing pressure in the thoracic cavity, but increasing pressure in the abdomen. But this rise in pressure in the abdomen is going to be accommodated by the relaxation of abdominal wall muscles. So this is what we are saying. The suprapleural membrane is fixed. So if you want to increase this vertical diameter, you just have to work on the mobile diaphragm so it contracts and flattens. So you will be reducing the pressure in the thoracic cavity, but when the diaphragm moves lower, it increases pressure in the abdominal cavity. But that is able to be um, tolerated because now the abdominal wall muscles are going to relax to compensate or to accommodate this increasing in pressure when the diaphragm flattens. So that's how you explain the vertical um, diameter. So we've talked of anterior posterior diameter, which is a pump handle that will handle it to cause the sternum to move outwards and upwards. Then you have the vertical diameter where the diaphragm will be lowered during inspiration. And then you have the transverse diameter, which is bucket handle, where the ribs are usually downwards and forwards, but during inspiration, they are brought upwards and outwards, increasing the transverse diameter. So all these are going to increase the um, the volume of the thoracic cavity, reducing the pressure in the thoracic cavity, making atmospheric higher than thoracic pressure, leading to air entering into the lungs, causing inspiration. So in summary, during quiet inspiration, the muscles involved are mainly the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles. Then the respiratory movement, you have anterior posterior diameter of the thorax, which is increased by elevation of the second to sixth ribs. The first ribs remain fixed by the scalenus muscles. Then the transverse diameter is increased, which is by the bucket handle movement, when the seventh to tenth ribs are elevated. So anterior posterior, which is pump handle mechanism, is second to sixth rib. Then seventh to tenth ribs are responsible for the transverse diameter, which is the bucket handle. Then vertical diameter is by the descent of the diaphragm. During deep inspiration, there's movement during quiet inspiration are increased. The first rib is elevated directly by the scalenus and indirectly by the sternocleidomastoid muscles. So during deep inspiration, what happens? The concavity of the thoracic spine is reduced by erector spinae muscle. The thoracic spine is usually concave anteriorly, but during deep inspiration, erector spinae muscles contract and that concavity is reduced. Which muscles are involved in forced inspiration? You have the diaphragm, intercostal muscles, plus accessory muscles. Diaphragm, intercostal muscles, and accessory muscles. Which are these accessory muscles involved in forced inspiration? You have sternocleidomastoids and the scalenus muscles. These directly fix the first rib. Then you have serratus anterior, pectoralis minor, erector spinae, and the ally nasi that open up the external nares. So we can ask you list the accessory muscles of inspiration. So you have sternocleidomastoid muscles, scalenus muscles, serratus anterior, pectoralis minor, erector spinae, alanizer. All these are used in inspiration together with the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles. So the respiratory movements in forced inspiration, we talked of bucket handle, pump, uh, pump handle, bucket handle, and vertical diameter being acted on and all this increase the volume of the thoracic cavity so every muscle that raises the rib is brought into action including the accessory muscles so what causes forced inspiration yeah so think of the elastic recoil of the lungs and the capacity of the thorax during quiet expiration there is it's a passive process with decrease in dimensions of the chest so what happens in expiration you reduce all these dimensions you increase the pressure in the thoracic cavity, it becomes more than the atmospheric pressure, and together with the elastic recoil of the lungs, this air, which is high in pressure, will now be pumped out in expiration.
Remember, expiration also involves the relaxation of the diaphragm 